Well, it, it's interesting because I was thinking about this while I was rereading your book. And the fact that Picasso is known for changing his style like radically so many times over the course of his life. And if you think of an artist's style as, you know, like with a writer, if a writer changed their writing style all the time, it would be kind of it, it would be kind of like a miracle because your style is such a part of who you are. And the fact that he's able to constantly shift, uh, I guess, in the pursuit of this revolutionary, you know, fixation, um, it almost sort of speaks to having, uh, I, I don't know, it's almost like, is there much depth to his personality at all? Is his style, like, if, if you can shift your style that easily, how, mm-hmm. how much how much depth is there, uh, how, how much attachment to you as a person does your style have? Do, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that's, no, that's an interesting point. And I think people have, you know, people often spoke of Picasso's betrayal. I mean, particularly in the, you know, the, the period of following the uh, 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 First World War when he married a, a very respectable Russian ballerina and he started painting these, you know, very realistic classical pictures. I mean, it was seen by most people as a rejection of kind of, you know, he'd suddenly become a reactionary bourgeois, the reactionary bourgeois he always claimed to despise. Um, other people have looked at this and said, well, there, you know, there's nothing more radical. I mean, when modernism and abstraction became respectable, he, you know, again, thumbed his nose at the prevailing uh, wisdom and, and turned in the other the opposite direction. And it's a good, you know, it's it's not a, a something I can, you know, I think anybody can uh, fully, um, you know, there's no right answer to this. Um, right. I think, you know, Picasso, it's, it, or there, if there is a right answer, I think it's psychological that he resisted very much being pigeonholed. Um, it, you know, nothing bothered him. You know, he didn't want to even be respectable in the terms of, you know, being an avant-garde artist. Um, and he was a man, he was certainly a man conflicted. Um, you know, he, as you said, had this very um, uh, traditional training in, you know, the acad- various academies in uh, Spain. And so he knew how to do this. And even in, you know, if you even look at, you know, um, you know, works that you consider, you know, very much in the modernist vein, like Guernica, um, you can see his classical training coming through. You can see those sort of fragments of classical statuary. And at his best, he can play off those modes. And I think, you know, Guernica is a good example where there are elements within it that are more sort of, you might say, traditionally rendered, you know, in a overall context that remains cubist um, and modernist. And that tension brings something to the work that a, a sort of more consistent approach might not. Um, or even in Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, he plays off different modes against each other, like the, you know, you have the the uh, three figures on the left and the two on the right who have, you know, in a completely different idiom, you know, after he's seen African art and been inspired by African masks. Um, and then you have the still life at the bottom, which is sort of a much more, sort of on one level, much more traditional. And these different modes, the tension among them I think creates a sense of unease, a sense of not having a, uh, a a firm foundation upon which to stand. That I think is is expressively powerful. Um, I don't know. I mean, and and you can look at his career as a whole and look at it that way. Um, that you never know exactly where you stand um, because he is sort of moving in and out and playing with, you know. It's almost as if he's standing on the wreckage of, of Western art history, which he helped destroy, but is then sort of picking up bits and pieces of the rubble and using it for his own purposes. Mm. 